Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Coffee with Clients. We are so excited that you have decided to join in for this week uh, for Coffee with Clients. My name is Karen Schatzline, and I am an independent certified opt to be a coach, and I'm joined with several coaches today um, that are going to be sharing with you. And just want to let you know, this is a... Um, a Zoom that is giving you that extra added client support. And we want you to always remember that your personal health coach is always your best resource for you to go to for questions, for uh, encouragement, for tips and everything. So we're, this also does not replace your uh, client support page on Facebook. We are just coming to you because we wanna teach the habits of health. And that is so important. It's such a critical part of your health journey is that habits of health system and the things that you can apply to your life to help you have lifelong transformation. So we're so excited about that. We've got several people. We've got Kristen Adair. We've got John Michael Kilpatrick. We've got Liz Knowles uh, that are coming on today that are going to be sharing with you about deciding what you want. And we're talking about element two. And I know that uh, Kristen is going to be sharing with you. It's going to be a um, a series that's going to take us through the end of the year with breaks in between where we're going to discuss how to thrive through the holidays and uh, not just survive them. So we're excited for what you're going to walk away with today. I encourage you after this Zoom uh, for you to make a connection point with your personal health coach and set up a time to talk to them about what you uh, heard today on the Zoom and how y'all can implement that in going forward in your coach client relationship. So go ahead and take it away, Kristen. Hello guys. I'm super excited to be back here on week two, um, going through element two. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get into element two. It is a big series of macro habits, um, healthy weight management, healthy hydration, healthy sleep, healthy motion, healthy surroundings, all the things that we're just going to focus on the first one um, this week, which is healthy weight management. But I wanted to invite Liz Knowles. Um, she's absolutely incredible. She's got an amazing story to kind of share with you first. A lot of times, um, this element specifically is talking about what do we want to accomplish? And a lot of times we think we know what we want, but that's easier said than done. Oh, Kristen, I'm here. I want to lose weight. I want to get healthy. But what does that look like? Have you thought past the 20, 30, 40 pounds or lower your cholesterol medicine? Have you really thought through what that looks like? And if you haven't, that's okay, we're gonna do it today, but I'm gonna let Liz share um, her story on where she was, what made her decide to get here, um, how ready she was, how willing she was. So Liz, go ahead and give us your um, testimony. Thank you, Kristen, and it's so good to be here with everyone today, and thank you for leading the way and hosting this and helping us all uh, with our client support and just supporting each other. I wanted to give a shout out to one of my clients, Debbie Ward. She um, hit 101 weight loss this past Monday when she did her check-in. So I'm so super proud of her. Um, it's just been such an amazing journey to help her get to this goal. So I love to tell my story. I share it weekly, daily, as I'm talking with my clients and celebrating uh, my coaches' clients and, and just supporting each other. My husband and I started this journey in January of 2017. Um, at the time, I was just 47 years old, and I was just getting into that you know, stage of life where the weight was coming on and I did not know what to do. We had been through just a lot of things. We'd had both of our fathers had passed away within a year of each other and we had survived a tornado tragedy. And we are in the ministry. At, we were pastoring a church at the time. And how many of you know that when there is a crisis going on, church people bring you food, right? And so like for almost two or three years, I had no control of our nutrition, nutrition for our family. We have three kids that are all grown now, but people were constantly bringing us casseroles and desserts and all those things. So I found myself at the end of 2016 at the heaviest I'd ever been. I'm barely 5'2", and I was almost 200 pounds. I was wearing like one X tops to really feel comfortable. And one day after my husband had seen a before and after picture of our personal coaches, Pat and Karen Schatzline, 
He walked into my office at the church and he said, Liz, go to this website and order two of these. Well, immediately I felt horrible because I knew when I went to the website, I'm like, this is about weight loss, right? And today we're going to learn about how ready we are in our process of, you know, really embracing like what Pat said, I can do this. But guys, when I started, I didn't feel that way. I sat there at my desk and went to that website. And did what my husband said do and ordered the two kits. And I was not ready. I didn't want to do it. It wasn't my choice. But he was running from a medical situation concerning his uh, cholesterol. He was 80 pounds overweight. And his heart doctor was like, you have to lose weight. This was his last resort, right? So I joined him in the journey. I never talked to my coaches, Pat and Karen Shatzlein. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I thought, well, I'll just play along and just see how this plays out, right? So at the end of the first week, my husband lost like almost 10 pounds and he was already feeling so much better. And I was still sneaking sugar in my coffee and guess what, guys, before I did this program, I was a huge sweet tea and Dr. Pepper at it. Like I would take it intravenously. <laughs> I would just drink it all the time. And so I was still kind of doing some of those habits. And at the end of my first week, I barely lost three pounds. But when the Monday rolled around and we did our weigh-in day, by the middle of the day, I was at the office. I'm like, but I lost three pounds. And what else have I done in all of my yo-yo dieting where, you know, I half-heartedly applied myself and I lost weight. So I decided that was my awakening. I thought, you know what? I need to do this. So on the readiness scale that we learn about in this program, I went from a one to a 10 in like seven days. I was so excited and I jumped all in and I really started embracing the lean and greens and and my husband was so supportive. He was on a mission and he was doing really, really well. My big milestone, y'all, I really didn't lose weight fast. I always call myself a slow loser. And I really feel like it had to do with the stage of life that I was in, you know, in my mid 40s and kind of going into that midlife hormonal place. I was losing kind of slow, but a big feat for me was the first week of May. I stepped on the scale and y'all, I had lost 27 pounds. I went from like this one X top kind of fitting me to looking like a tent. I was so excited. And that was the first time I really connected with my coach, Karen Schatzlein. And she created my before and after picture. And she was like, look at this. And that was so important to me when I saw the comparison in the same top. Well, y'all, I went on to lose 45 pounds by my son's wedding in September, and I rocked a dress in that wedding that I never thought I'd wear. It was a gold lame fitted dress, and it was amazing. Along my journey, what I learned with our Habits of Health system is that I leaned on some foods. I leaned on some things because they brought me comfort. One of those was white chocolate. I noticed on my journey that if I got stressed or depressed, I would lean to Fritos or white chocolate. It's weird. I know it was salty and sweet, <laughs> but in the process of doing this program and helping others, I identified that in my life. And I'm happy to say now that I don't binge on that anymore. And I have maintained my 45 uh, pound weight loss goal. It's almost been five years now. I've been getting better and better. I got a Peloton two years ago. Um, I'm at the best shape at 52, I think, than when I was before I started having children. So thank you for letting me share, Kristen. I hope that my story was inspiring to others. No matter what stage you are at, if you feel like you can do this or you can't do this, let me say to you today, just keep doing it. And your readiness will change as you begin to see the improvements in yourself. God bless y'all. Thank you so much, Liz. Yes, that was absolutely amazing. Um, I love how she was brutally honest and was like, um, I went from like not wanting to do it to like all in. Um, and, and a lot of us can relate to that. You kind of feel like you want to because you know you got to do it, but you don't actually really want to. Me, I was like bold ham. I was ready. Um, I didn't know what it was, didn't care what it was. I was just ready, 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 ready. Now, here's the difference. I wasn't very confident. 
that I could do it because like most of us, we have that. This isn't the first, this isn't the first thing we've done. We've been all the other places before we came here because this was going to be harder. This wasn't a magic pill. This wasn't some quick fix. This was actually going to require Kristen to put in a little bit of work. So I was ready to do it, but I wasn't very confident um, in, in whether I could get there or not. So, and a lot of us have different stories, but we're going to kind of talk through that today. So um, element two, again, is kind of knowing what you want to accomplish. And it's more than just, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to lose 30 pounds. I want to feel good in my own skin. It is absolutely really defining it, not just defining it, but figuring out what you're going to change to get to the goal and what you're willing to let go of. And that's the part where a lot of us get stuck, like Liz was saying, the, the Fritos and the white chocolate. What are we willing to let go of? Because we all want to get there, but are we willing to let go of something else to do it? So, all right, the readiness ruler she was describing is basically a scale of one to 10. So, and here's the cool thing, guys, it doesn't, I did this the other day because I knew I was going to be talking about it today. Um, and I went through and I put some things as if I was just starting on program. Now I've been a coach for three years and I've been at my goal weight but when I look at that, I can still level up in many areas. So it doesn't matter if you're on day one or five months in or two years in and you're maintaining, you can still go through this again and either decide to really dive all in, recommit or level up. So let's do that now. The readiness scale of one to 10, let's go ahead and put in the chat and put, be honest, nobody's taking names, nobody's grading you. But this only works if you're honest. Somebody already put eight. You ready, Tammy? All right. On a scale of one to 10, how ready are you to take back your health? Throw them in there. Good. Okay. Here's what element two talks about. We talk about in, in life, we're wired to gauge things off of a pleasure principle. Okay. What this element is going to teach you is how to go from pleasure principle to satisfaction and fulfillment. And what I mean by that is when we eat, we feel pleasure. When we stop eating, so does the pleasure. So we continue eating the white chocolate or the Fritos to feel that instant gratification, to feel that pleasure. But in reality, it doesn't give us that. You know, it's been said that 75% of the time that we eat, we're not actually hungry. We're just trying to find that pleasure principle so this is going to teach you that delayed gratification, how to look for satisfaction and fulfillment over just that quick end result, because that quick result gets us that yo-yo toxic cycle that we're trying to break, okay? Um, so let's look at it. I'm actually gonna go through this um, in my notebook. All right, so your readiness ruler of one to 10, we've all got it. Most of you are eight, nine, and 10. Here is the first question. That's how ready are you? How important? is it to you to get healthy? Not just how ready, but how important is it? On a scale of one to 10, if you don't have your life book, you can write these questions down. Put it in the chat, how important, all right? And then ask, you gotta dig further because yeah, it's great to identify on a scale of one to 10, how, how important is it? But what led you to pick this number? Do you need to regain your confidence? Is your health really in the balance? Um, for me, I was tired of feeling gross in my own skin. I wanted to get me back. I've got toddlers and it's the best job in the world, but I was at the bottom of the totem pole on my best day. Literally eating, this is disgusting, but I'll own it. Um, stale goldfish out of a cup holder, like a car seat cup holder and animal crackers and whatever else I could get to. That is where I was. I wanted to find who I was again, pre-mom. I wanted my kids to see me living a healthy life. I wanted to instill healthy habits in them. I didn't want them to have to do the yo-yo stuff. I didn't want them to have to always be ready because they're waiting on the next quick fix and praying that it would work, okay? So what led you to pick your number? The next question, if possible, what would help you pick a higher number? That's a hard one to think through because we always think, oh, it's important. So for me, at the time, the truth was it was really believing that I could follow through with it really believing that this was going to be different, really believing that I wasn't going to wait on the other shoe to drop, that this was going to be the end all be all for me. I wasn't, I was really good at doing this, not this, but whatever this was at the time and, and getting to the goal, not, I never got to the goal. <laughs> Let's back up. Getting 10 pounds off, five pounds off, and then deciding this was no longer working and finding the next this. 
but what was going to make this stick? My number might have been higher had I actually had the belief system that I could. Maybe it was having a better mindset. For me, it was. I needed to believe that I was worth that. My kids are worth everything to me. I will do everything for them. And I've heard it said before that um, you will die for your kids, but will you choose to live for them? That's different. That hits different. My other thing was maybe stop overthinking it. What happens if this doesn't work? You know, I was great at wanting to do something, but I'm also, the therapist is my background, so I'm great at overanalyzing. But it also justifies for me, it's a little self-justification for when it doesn't pan out, this wasn't supposed to. It didn't work. This, it was this person's fault. It was this program's fault. It wasn't ever me. It gave me a way to blame something else for something I wanted to fix. So if, my, if I'm honest, maybe my number would have been a little higher if I actually believed that I was worth it, that I could do it. Okay. All right. So the next one, how confident are you that you can reach a healthy weight right now? Let's put in the chat. Okay. How confident on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that you can reach a healthy weight? Perfect. If you're a client, you can be honest. You can be honest. Five, three. Okay. I love the tens, but what I really love is the fours and the threes because I relate to that. You know, sometimes it's easy to think, that coaches don't understand you or, or they haven't been where you've been. We have, we've been exactly where you've been. And we're here coaching right now because we know we will go exactly back to where we came from if we don't level up and put our feet to the fire. That's why I'm here at least. Um, okay, here's the truth. I was about a four confident. I, this was not my first rodeo. I had tried everything, everything. And I was waiting on it to fail. Always ready for it to fail. Cause then I could say, I told you, told you so. And it wasn't about me. It was about whatever else failed me. I also lacked the ownership and accountability to actually follow through. You know, being a mom of toddlers, life is crazy. Life is busy. Life is constantly in a hurry. It's more convenient to drive through and get a happy meal. It's um, easier to eat candy out of a cup holder, even if it's gross. It's easier to eat half of a stove pop tart on a kitchen counter. I have done that. And I know I'm not the only one that's done that gross stuff, but it was easy for me to do those things. So my confidence was lacking because in the mess of life and the chaos, I'm a dance mom, we're going to ball practice. Did I know that I was gonna have the willpower to do it? Am I motivated in the second? Yeah, but motivation is fleeting. You have to create disciplines, but I also needed to really hone into what did I actually want to do? All right, so the next one is, if possible, what would help you pick a higher number? For me, mine was being consistent, not allowing myself to quit on me. Truth, to quit doing it in the dark. I was so good at trying this new thing and I didn't want to tell anybody. Tell anybody, no, and I was killing myself in the gym. I was starving. I was taking some cleanse, some shrink wrap. I didn't want to tell anybody, Kristen, are you losing weight? Mm -mm, it must be the angle. I didn't want to own it because you know why? I knew it was going to fail eventually, but was it failing or was I stopping? I never fully committed ever to any of it, to any of it. So that's what I want you to look at today, being consistent, having the support system, doing it in the dark, you don't have the support. You know, you are a product or you become like the five people you hang around most. Well, lucky for me, I hang around a lot, a lot of really cool people that all have the same goals and visions. Do they want my weight or my um, dreams as far as working out or, or maybe running? No, no, they don't have to, but they all want health. They all want a healthy lifestyle. They all want a healthy family. They all push to be better and show up every day. And you know what? That makes me show up. Sometimes it's just knowing that other people around you are doing it. And so it's easy for you to say, okay, if they're showing up when it's hard, if Liz is in the best health, uh, health of her life at 52, well, I've got to show up. Sometimes that's what we need to know that other people are doing it. So can you. So can you. Um, I need to quit self-sabotaging. I was really good at doing really good on Monday through Thursday. And then Friday came or Thursday afternoon. Let's be real. Thursday afternoon came and then Friday came. And then, you know, Friday, you might as well tie that into Friday, Saturday, Sunday and start again on Monday. Am I the only one that's been there? Put a one in the chat if you have done the exact same thing. 
Yes, yes. So you're doing really good three days of the week, not so good four days of the week. And then when Monday hits, you're ready to go again, but you're kind of like, well, crap, what happened? If you do that long enough, you will convince yourself you can't do it. And it's not that you can't do it. It's that you didn't do anything consistently enough for your body to figure out what you were asking it to do. So doing good for three days and then doing bad for four, the program didn't change. Your goals didn't change. You just didn't show up consistently enough. Guys, please hear me. This is not about being perfect. This is about being consistent. But you have to go further than I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to lose 30 pounds. You've got to identify how important is it to you, um, how ready you are, and how willing you are to do it. All right. So the last one is the readiness ruler on scale of one to 10. You're a 10. Okay. So we have identified how confident you are, how important or how important it is, how confident you are, how ready are you now? It doesn't matter if you're on here. You're already a client. So it's not about getting started deciding. It's about right now. Where do you want to go from this point forward? What led you to pick this number? I'm ready and fed up. That's exactly where I was. Matter of fact, my husband said, I don't care what this is, talking about program. If I don't have to wrap you in one more thing, if you don't take one more cleanse, if you don't do some other crazy diet, you can do it. He was fed up. I was fed up. When I say wrapping, I was wrapping in saran wrap. I was doing anything sick you could think of. It was my game, my game, the next quick fix. I felt awful about me. I felt awful that I was constantly trying to find the next thing to get me there when really it was just me and to quit hiding in the closet because I knew I couldn't do that there. You have to take the personal ownership. And the truth is I was never really proud of what I had done. It was never good enough. So the weeks that I had halfway lost two pounds or three pounds, it didn't matter. And when they don't matter, on the hard days when life is crazy at dance or ball practice, why is it worth continuing? That is why we say over and over and over, live it out loud, celebrate your wins. If you can't cheer you on, nobody else is going to. All right, here's the last one. If possible, what would help you pick a higher number? Mine at that moment was nothing. I was ready. That is what you need to look at for you. What would help you pick a higher number? If there's something that would help you pick a higher number, this is where you need to go and talk to your coach. You need to talk with them and say, hey, look, here's where I'm at, be real. You can't do anything living in a fake world where you kind of want it, you kind of don't, one foot in, one foot out. That is not serving anybody and it's certainly not serving you. So if you need help and direction, get with your personal coach and say, hey, here's what would help me pick a higher number. And they can talk through that with you. All right, so the last thing, you know, there's gotta be action to any of it. All right, let me pull this out. Take a sheet of paper right now and write down three things you want to change in your health right now. It could be your belief system. It could be your waistline. It could be living out loud. It could be learning to celebrate you. It could be um, getting ingrained in this community. It could be being able to to go on walks with your family again, or being able to um, plan healthy meals. Write down three things that you want to change right now though. The key is right now. It could be staying committed to plan. It could be getting in your water. It could be sleep. I'll be the first to say that's my worst habit. What are three things you wanna change right now? Write down three things. The next is this, write down three things you can start doing daily to instill those healthy habits. So if it is healthy, meat, healthy meals with your family, then I need to be conscious about today, I'm gonna to start prepping what we're eating for dinner. If it is my belief system in, in me to keep going, I need to get with my coach and say, hey, I need to up my accountability. I've gotta start believing in me. I've gotta start seeing my wins. You know, what you focus on will grow. If you start finding wins, they'll continue to happen. It sends off those dopamine um, receptors in your brain and they keep firing off and you win more and more and more. And sometimes that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Um, if it is staying committed to plan, again, up that accountability. If you know you need that, don't be afraid to own it. The biggest thing in this is taking personal responsibility and ownership of your journey. The good, the bad, celebrating all the wins in it. Um, and then figuring out what you can change and tweak. All right, the hardest one. Write down three things you can stop doing today that will put you closer to your goal. Three things you can stop. 
Um, for me at the time when I started, it was, I needed to change my route home. I didn't need to swing by a McDonald's anymore because the kids were going to see the happy, the McDonald's arches and they were going to want a happy meal. Happy meal came with a toy. Happy meal was also easy, made my life easy. I needed to change my route home. I needed to get them excited about dinner. So you know what? We did a lot of cauliflower pizza. You know what I found out? If they helped me make it, now I will say, do not let your um, toddlers help with the marinara sauce. I've got white chairs and that's a train wreck, but they're really good at the cheese. When we made dinners together, they ate it. They got excited. What I needed to change was I needed to quit hiding in the dark, hoping this would pan out. I needed to really map down exactly what I wanted. It was more than just, I want to feel confident in my own skin. It was more than just, I needed to lose the weight. I needed to write down exactly what I wanted. And some of you need to do that now. Um, I wanted more accountability for my coach and I was going to allow my coach to push me. Even on days I didn't want to. I was tired of having a friend for a coach, a cheerleader. Cheerleaders are great. Cheerleaders don't win games, coaches do. I needed a coach. So I hope that helps you. We are gonna, the cool thing is there's five more of these. We're gonna go through all five of them. So you can look at hydration, you can look at sleep, you can look at healthy surroundings, changing your people, places, things, all of those. And those are gonna be your micro habits. Those are your big blocks in like your mason jar that you're going to stick with every single day that are going to help you get to your goal. So most importantly, know that you can absolutely do it. It's all in a matter of a choice. And sometimes you have to remake that choice over and over and over. I hope you have a great week. Can't wait to see you back next Friday when we go through the second part of Element 2. And congrats to all of our winners. Um, and see you next week. Bye, guys.